Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And today we are talking about conspiracy theories because quite frankly, conspiracy theories are an American tradition. Now, obviously the world has conspiracy theories and, and they fly left and right, but I want to go through some of these, especially from the American perspective, because quite frankly, we're kind of crazy. And it's getting worse out there. And we're going to talk about that. Now, The Sun had a really good write-up on this. I'm cribbing a little bit from them. But I really want to go through this. And so let's start with a quiz here uh, for you. And I'm going to let you know my thoughts on these as well. But here we go with some of the major conspiracy theories that we've seen pervasive in the United States over the last couple of decades, especially in more modern times as well. And for the record, we are dealing with two pieces of logic here when we are dealing with conspiracies. The first one is the possibility that the conspiracy happens, right? Now, anything has a possibility. I could turn into a unicorn and fly away in this video. That is a possibility. The other side of it is the probability. What is the statistical chance that I will actually turn into a unicorn and fly away during this video? That's pretty dang low, next to probably so low it can't be calculated. And so when we're thinking about conspiracy theories, we always have to understand that it is possible but is it probable? And that is something that oftentimes is very missed because I hear it all the time. Well, anything is possible, sure, but not everything is probable. And so with that, we have seen a rash of conspiracies. The 9-11 conspiracies, you know, that it was a government inside job, that it was an insurance job, that, you know, an actual plane didn't hit the Pentagon, it was a missile. We've seen all of these kinds of things. You know, that's a very difficult one. Now, interestingly enough, I've asked metal treaters, uh, you know, uh, the, those that treat metals about the steel tensiary strength, and they've all said, well, yeah, absolutely. When you're talking about jet fuel, you know, uh, basically crashing into 20, 30-year-old steel, steel becomes brittle over time, etc., etc. And for the record, if you completely disagree with me and think I'm a complete idiot for this, that is more than you're right. And I'm sure I'll hear from you in the comments. I'm just going through these. But 9-11 conspiracy theories were one. Um, interestingly enough, from the UK, we had conspiracy theories over Princess Di's murder, uh, or, or rather she crashed in a car. And then there were obviously the conspiracy theories was she was murdered by the royal family because she's, uh, you know, dating Dodi uh, Al-Fayed, if I remember correctly. All those things. Not sure what to think about that. But but I just think that they basically had a driver that was negligent and got into a car crash because that's kind of who I am. And I think that's the most probable thing that happened. Faking the moon landing is another one. Like the, the calculation of, of that, you'd have to have so many people that were in on this and nobody talked for 30, 40, 50 years. Again, I, I see that as highly improbable. You know, and, and again, possibilities being aside, this, this is the probability that I'm speaking to. JFK's assassination, I mean, oh my God, how many conspiracies theories on that were, were there? The, one of the last things that Oswald said was he was a patsy. So there you go. Roswell, was it a weather balloon? Was it aliens? You know, has a lot of our technology been grown from those aliens from Roswell? That's a whole thing. Chemtrails from military planes. I think that's kind of nuts, but you know, hey, I believe what you want to believe. There you go. And then there's COVID and 5G, that COVID, or rather 5G cell towers are spreading COVID. That was pervasive in the United States. It got really pervasive in the United Kingdom as well. Um, another one, birds aren't real. If you didn't know that one was a conspiracy theory, that was actually started by a prankster to kind of prove the point. And they would go travel around, from what I understand, like a van with birds aren't real. They had websites, all this kind of stuff. And they actually got people to believe that every bird was a mechanical surveillance device <laughs> across the globe, which, oh my God. On top of it, Flat Earth. I actually interviewed Mark Sargent uh, from a uh, documentary called Beyond the Curve. He's one of the leaders, quote unquote, of the Flat Earth movement. You can go watch that video or listen to that interview all you want and make your own decisions on what I think on that one. On top of it, um, there, there are conspiracies like health authorities are hiding natural cures. Uh, you know, like in other words, like there's big industry to let us keep having cancer because quite frankly, if we had a natural cure for that, then they'd be out of money. There you go. One of my favorite ones is the Denver International Airport in scenic Denver, Colorado is actually a hub for the Illuminati. Amazingly enough, as they are rebuilding and improving that, that, um, that uh, airport as it's under construction, they're leaning into that, basically saying we're building an Illuminati base here. It's pretty funny. And then we've got directly political ones as well. 
And again, if you are a longtime listener or follower of mine, you know that I like to say that essentially um, cybersecurity is agnostic to politics, but we're not immune from it. So we had rampant, um, basically, explosions on um, birtherism, meaning uh, was President Obama not actually born in the United States in Hawaii uh, because he had his short form, not his long form birth certificate. His father was Kenyan, et cetera, et cetera. On top of it, and this is one that's been going on for a while. Uh, the reptilians, like a race of aliens that are reptilian, known as the Babylonian Brotherhood, are running the U.S. government. Uh, feel free to put your thoughts on that one. I probably shouldn't ask you to do that, but here we are. On top of it, we have the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. This is something that Henry Ford published uh, when he owned the Dearborn newspaper that was delivered to Ford dealership. That has been long debunked uh, for centuries and centuries. Well, not centuries, but it has been long debunked for quite some time. A more recent one was Hillary Clinton was running a pedophile network um, you know, at, ping, at Comet Ping Pong, which is a pizza parlor in Washington, D.C. Somebody went there armed looking for the basement where the kids were. They didn't have a basement, you know, those kinds of things and a ton and a ton and a ton more. So we're about six minutes into this and you're asking me, Nick, why on earth are you talking about this? And the reason why I'm talking about this is simply because uh, former President Trump recently had basically an unfortunate, uh, just an ex horrific and unfortunate assassination attempt against his life. Uh, you know, he obviously survived that. He was just recently at the RNC's uh, convention and all of that. You know, I wish ill will on nobody. And, and it's just what an awful situation. As a result of that, conspiracy theories are foremost right now exploding once again all over the internet. And so some of the recent conspiracies regarding this, and for the record, I do not care if you like Trump or you hate the man, he is divisive in his own right. I think we can all agree on that. That is not the point of this. The point of this is to understand the proliferation of conspiracy theories and the issues that we've got with this. And I just listed off a whole bunch of conspiracy theories and you might be thinking about all of these, including Epstein, which I didn't even mention, and thinking, yeah, these are all true or some of these are or some of these aren't. But studies have shown that we Americans believe at least a chunk of what I just mentioned, including Epstein that I just mentioned as well. So for those that are not fans of Trump, the running theory across social media, and I've been seeing these as well as I've been looking at this and researching this, is that this was basically a false flag operation. In other words, like basically they hired this 20-year-old kid, um, basically Thomas Crooks, to go ahead and take a shot at Trump so that Trump would get sympathy. They would shoot him up in the polls. He'd get better fundraising. And for the record, after that attempt, he did actually raise in the polls and get a lot of money. But I'm not saying, because probability-wise, it doesn't make sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is if you think about a person like Donald Trump or any logical human being out there, you're really going to hire somebody to take a shot at your head, intentionally try and miss, because what if that guy slips and actually hits you in the head? There you go. Not to mention we have a whole lot of information on Crooks that basically really makes him look like an incel loner shooter, including you know stuff he said online that has recently come to light in the last 24 hours, now that the FBI has essentially had access to his phone. Now, the other side of the aisle are fans of President Trump. They, of course, have their own conspiracy theories on this ecosystem. And so Thomas Matthew Crook, as I just mentioned, uh, basically... Uh, he was identified, and this is the first conspiracy theory, he was identified as a Patsy Antifa terrorist known as Mark Violets. If you didn't know this, that originally that was one of the first things to explode on the right wing side of this disinformation insanity. And for the record, that person in question was an Italian YouTuber called Marco Violi. And essentially, here it is. And all he said online was, leave me alone. He was not a shooter. He was an Italian, like like he was into soccer or something like that. And he's a YouTuber, not the guy that shot. And later was identified. And that really underscores why we wait for information. Because we don't want to believe what's out there. Because the other one that I saw was that essentially a woman behind the stage and a black cap was behaving unusually, a.k.a. calmly. Uh, and then essentially, by virtue of that, she was an accomplice that was signaling. And that has since been debunked. And there are others as well. So the Secret Service, uh, you know, had a failure to basically secure the perimeter from about, I think it was 140 yards or so away. And that was basically seen as a huge mess up, which then in turned into a deep state plot. In other words, 
towards the Secret Service. And again, the more people in a conspiracy, the more chance it has to leak out. Suddenly just covered that up as opposed to just human error and a lapse in judgment, whatever it is, that allowed that open rooftop to allow a 20-year-old with a high-powered rifle to get on it. And so, again... I'm trying to stay away from these kinds of things. I try to stay away from politics, but I've got to be honest here. This is an issue in the United States. And the reason why I'm bringing all of this up, JFK to, to, to Trump's potential assassination, is that thanks to artificial intelligence and online deepfakes, this information right now, no matter what the conspiracy theory is, and Trump's assassination attempt is the latest one, is spreading faster than 5G spreads COVID. And that's what we're talking about right here. And I don't think that for the record. So, uh, meaning 5G spreads COVID. So, here are some of the big ones that we have seen in the aftermath of this. There was a doctored image of Secret Service agents smiling as essentially they were hurrying, uh, you know, Trump off the stage to protect him. because That's what the Secret Service does. They put their bodies in front of bullets. And essentially, that was widely shared and so it was a manipulated video it received millions of views and people thought oh the secret service was smiling that somebody took a shot at trump that was one the other one that we saw as well was and this was pervasive on the left initially that trump wasn't actually shot that a teleprompter actually took the bullet and essentially exploded and by virtue of that Trump took shrapnel to the ear. We know that is incorrect. That basically, you know, if he had been one inch over, it would have entered his brain. But where he was, it went through his ear and by virtue of that ended up in an audience member in critical condition. And there's more obviously than that. But here's the thing. This isn't a, a new phenomenon in American society. As I mentioned, JFK conspiracy is going all the way back to the founding of the country, but it's way, way, way more widespread than it's ever been. And that's the issue we've got. Now think about it this way. In 1963, historian Richard Hofstetter identified what he called the quote unquote paranoid style in American politics. Now, his work entitled Anti-Intellectualism in American Life is actually something I have on my Kindle. I've read it. It's not a long read, but it is well worth the read because it's quite frankly is prophetic in what we are seeing today, something the internet has dropped a supercharger into. In fact, on top of this, since the advent of mass media, every major event in American history is now being interpreted as essentially some kind of cover-up in some way, shape, or form. Oh, well, clearly they're covering up that Barack Obama is a secret Kenyan or whatever, right? This is what's happening. And so here's why this is widespread. Outside of the intelligence agencies spinning this to essentially disorient the American public, I've talked about this, uh, the Internet Research Agency out of Russia, uh, the Chinese have had a hand in this, etc., etc., etc. Disinformation is very lucrative. It's big business. Now think about Alex Jones. Now he's a disinformation uh, host, for example, that was running InfoWars, and he made millions and millions and millions of dollars doing this. By virtue of that, they literally had a court case, which he lost and now owes $1.5 billion, and had to declare bankruptcy over this. But in that court case, it came out, um, especially to his, uh, basically his colleagues, like his father and some others, that essentially they would literally track the ratings on some kind of conspiracy theory and if that was the one that was getting a ton of traction he would go out and essentially start talking about it playing it up over and over and over aka the sandy hook kids were not actually killed they were essentially uh crisis actors that was his claim that has been proven false over and over and over again and one of his, what is one of probably the most horrific american tragedies when you've got a whole bunch of five-year-olds getting killed by some jerk so this is what we're talking about and on top of it we're also experiencing information overload as well. We are spending hours, literally on average, hours and hours, six to eight hours a day on average, on our phones ingesting this kind of stuff. And we're not thinking about it. We're not stopping to read these articles. We're seeing the headline that is hyperbolic, that is crazy from the right or the left or whatever it is. And it basically confirms what we're thinking about that and we move on and now we have reinforcement and now we're seeing those fake videos and it confirms what we think and on and on and on. On top of it, the pandemic didn't help as well. We were locked in our homes with devices for a year, two years or so, and by virtue of that, it became legion. And this is a huge problem that we have. And so I'm bringing this up because as I am dealing with things uh, in cybersecurity, one of the fundamentals of cybersecurity is trust. It's trust in each other. It's trust in information, but it's also 
creating a filter of distrust in the technological environment around us. So we don't fall for phishing scams. We don't fall for these things. But quite frankly, we are not building that filter of distrust when it comes to information delivery, especially from friends that we have on social media because we tend to trust them, even though they could be absolute crackpots, same with relatives, or what we are seeing as quote unquote pundits. You have a million followers on Twitter and you're saying the craziest things. You have an air of credibility. The blue check mark was part of that that got completely compromised when Elon Musk took over Twitter. And now people with blue check marks can be crackpot loons, but they're paying eight bucks a month and now they look legit. These are things that we have to look out for. These are things we have to understand. We have to build that filter of distrust. Otherwise, quite frankly, we're just screwing ourselves over. And quite frankly, a divided nation will never come together if we are continuously fed demonstrably false information because the truth oftentimes lies somewhere in between. So I'll leave it at that. I know this was a longer video, but quite frankly, it just bothers, just bothers the heck out of me that, that we have essentially this issue. And so by virtue of that, this is a video slash podcast slash radio segment slash deep dive of the week because quite frankly... I think everybody needs to be talking about this and I almost never urge you to share this beyond my preamble of, you know, of, of, you know, my, my normal exit, you know, on videos and podcasts, but I do think that this needs to get around and whether it's you sharing this or you just simply bringing this subject up as, Hey, you know, we need to lower the temperature. We need to understand fact from fiction. This is a huge thing and actually understand what research is. It's not going to some crackpot news site that has some hyperbolic article you completely agree with. With. That's not research. Research oftentimes is uncomfortable and that should be understood too. So here we are. I'm going to shut up now, but quite frankly, we really shouldn't on this topic because it's going to kill us in the long run. And I mean that in, in all seriousness. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter. And please share this one. You know, same with on YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please attempt to stay private. Thanks, everybody.